Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to New Orleans, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. A lot of noise on cloud, a lot of signal on cloud, and we've been unpacking that. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. Alexander Kozlaev is here. He's the head of IT architecture at MTS, and he's joined by Konstantin Yakovlev, who is the lead system architect at MTS, a telecommunications company in Ukraine. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for coming on. Uh, Thank you. Okay, not, not Ukraine in, in oh, Russia. Oh, it's not Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. So it says here Ukraine. <laughs> okay. We, we, we had some bad data. Uh, we make sure to clean that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a data quality problem here. Sorry about that. Okay, yes, my apologies. Um, okay, let's start with Alexander. Maybe you could describe MTS and tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, surely. MTS is uh, one of the largest mobile operators in Russia. It's represented on a Russian market more than 20, roughly 23 years. So currently, uh, our subscribers uh, <coughs> in Russia only uh, may be counted by number of uh, 80 millions. And we have subsidiaries in uh, different countries uh, like uh, Belarus, uh, like Armenia, like uh, what, uh, and other countries. So uh, we are putting forward our digital services, our uh, cellular services, uh, and others. Uh, and me personally, uh, working roughly from the first day of the MTS, so I'm roughly 20 years in, uh, in MTS staff, starting as system administrator. Okay, yeah. so you've seen the evolution of the exactly, various exactly. backup, uh, and we'll come back uh, to, to that, but I wanted to ask Konstantin, it's a long way to come to a show like this. Um, how are you enjoying the show, and what has it been like for you? It's a nice conference, but the main thing for us, I think it's a backup of physical servers. Uh, because now we have a different systems to backup physical servers and virtual servers. And maybe we hope in the future to join these systems and have only one backup for all our services. So it's a good step from Win to make a physical backup also. I think it's the main goal for us here in, in this conference. Right, so that was one of the big announcements this week. Of course, Veeam has oftentimes been pointing out that Veeam up until this point has not backed up bare metal servers, physical servers as you say, and now that happens. So that allows you to consolidate your backup architecture, or is that right? Maybe. Maybe. We hope. <laughs> it's the first step. It's the first step. So now we have to look how we will backup bare metal servers. We would like to harmonize our uh, backup uh, software because currently we have uh, three or more even uh, backup uh, software uh, featuring like uh, Semantec, uh, like uh, Net, uh, Networker. Uh, so we would like to join them and b <laughs> the best uh, to choose best of breed uh, of them. And currently, the uh, Veeam software now can play this role as being the big player like them. Alexander, you have the history of MTS, and you've seen the backup systems evolve from before virtualization yeah, exactly. all the way through. Can you uh, share with us the MTS backup and data protection journey? <laughs> backup and data protection journey. Mm -hmm. uh, Surely, it started from very simple tape drives uh, staying on, on top of the table. I, and I am personally was who were repairing them from <laughs> <laughs> jammed uh, tapes and, and so on. Then we were tape uh, autoloaders and, uh, and others and others. But uh, nowadays, uh, we have a huge amount of data uh, about, uh, okay, it's, it's a very big amount of data, so simple tapes uh, cannot, uh, cannot operate them properly. Uh, so we have uh, historically different uh, software solutions which were acquired with different companies uh, which were uh, merged with, with us. So uh, currently uh, we would like to harmonize uh, all this, uh, all this suite of uh, software features. So the 
how big way <laughs> was passed by. So from an uh, IT architecture perspective, uh, Constantine, what are the big challenges in the telecommunications industry in terms of high availability? And we hear a lot about always on. Uh, what does that mean to your business? I think it's uh, maybe always on. It's not a first uh, main goal today. Maybe for us, main goal is uh, NFE, if you heard about it. It's a yeah, yeah. virtualization of uh, network part of telecommunication company. This is the uh, first and main question. And after that, we can talk about always on and uh, data protection because in telecommunication world, it's very important uh, part of our business. So, so, NF yeah, so just NFV is really about being able to deliver software services to uh, you know your your users. Yes, uh, I, maybe, maybe I would like to say NFV being yeah. as a tool, uh, yeah. but, but uh, a real goal is uh, agility of the business because yeah. uh, we are challenging very uh, very different uh, range of tasks and we need to react very fast. So the only way to to withstand such uh, threats uh, is. Uh, to react very fast uh, by, by means of very flexible infrastructure. <coughs> so the only way uh, only uh, is to, yeah. to to build NFV uh, yeah. infrastructure no, no, and NFV ready. So it's a shift in mind. Yeah, yes. I, I, I think back. I, I worked in telecommunications 20 years ago, and I mean so, it was yes. lots of big gear and cabling, and it's a software exactly. world now. And NFV is just part of right. Is it a, a term to help you deliver? And, uh, and agility sounds just to ruin all of the silo oriented yeah. solutions yeah. which are built at what everywhere. Does, I've, I've talked to many of the, the t large telecommunication vendors over the years, and that the whole cloud wave, um, you know, some telecommunication providers tried to be a cloud provider. Most of them, NFV is, a, is an exciting thing that they're, that they're looking yes. at. Uh, how does cloud impact you know your journey? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes it, it it does impact us very. <laughs> Very, uh, how to say? Okay, so uh, currently, uh, what do impact us most of all is uh, uh, the need to to reorganize our internal processes. Uh, currently, we are not uh, cloud oriented in our minds and our process. Uh, I have already mentioned that uh, our company is more than twenty years old, and all the processes are from the very very beginning, so m most of them should be ruined full completely and built build up from scratch. So currently it's, it's a big, big task and we are trying to, to work with that. Uh, and we are talking with our tops in order to, to for example, to state the tasks in different ways, and to work in different, uh, seem different, <laughs> as you probably have. And, and where does Veeam fit in? Uh, you mentioned you have a lot of different flavors of backup software, because you have to support both physical servers and virtual servers. Where does Veeam fit in and where do you see it going? Veeam is our main solution for backup of virtualized systems. And uh, in IT, we already virtualized most part of our systems, but now we start this NFV process in telecommunication part. So Veeam will play more and more important role in, uh, in our life because uh, we start to transform our telecommunication part and to, to, to move it to an uh, IT-like world. And in IT, the Veeam is the main solution for backup virtual machines, so in all other parts of our company, Veeam will start to play this role as a main solution of uh, data protection for the virtual machines. So the, when uh, more and more virtual, virtual servers uh, will appear in our life. Veeam will play more and more important role. So this is a <laughs> this is a Veeam role <laughs> in our yeah. life. This is a main solution for backup virtual machines. So okay. yeah, that's, you got to be be more and more reliant on that that platform to support your future. So yes, yeah, so uh, less and less physical servers, but still, as uh, head of one of the division and Vim said we cannot virtualize 100 percent so always would be some small part of physical servers and okay good well we're out of time thank you very much for coming on the cube appreciate it <laughs> thank you thank You're you welcome thank you very much all right keep it right there buddy Stu and i will be back to wrap right after this short break right back <laughs>